uh, Uncle Benny here. Okay, Benny, I guess when I was closest to him, Benny was a giant. In that fact, he didn't become a giant until he was uh, in his 20s. Uh, and he was not just a giant in size and, and physics, but he's also a giant in his brilliance and, uh, and his seriousness about his family. And he loved his family. And he took care pretty well, held the family together, you know, all the old many, many years. And, uh, but then he had, then he was an entrepreneur, uh, just put it plainly, he, he was. He, he worked and got very successful as a, uh, a chemical plant operator, uh, very successful. But he got this uh, entrepreneurial spirit and uh, tried to go after it. And uh, started out roofing houses and doing all kind of stuff. And I mean, just to name it, he did it. You know, in the way of construction, I mean, he did it. As a matter of fact, he actually got one of the hurricanes. I was trying to think of which one, one so bad on the coast, Gulf Coast. He got the kind of cleaning contract for that, which the government never paid him for. It took slow paying, but never got completely paid for it. And then he had got all of this. Uh, equipment. I mean, just massive amounts of equipment. You know, heavy equipment to uh, clean up the hurricane, and and the government didn't pay. Correct. Right, right. Two years ago, they didn't pay anything, and he had all, all that. So that 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 basically bankrupted him. To tell you the truth, that along with an accident in Milby, Alabama, where a woman stepped in the in a hole that was left. Uh, it's what unex, unexposed, and within that lady broke a leg. Uh, so he had to take the name out. Of, the business name out of his his name and put it in his children's name. Uh, well, something looked like their name, but then it was a, just a quiet kid, very as I say, just aggressive with business. We played well, well, I did too before we went in service. The thing called big car, little car, you know, and uh, little truck, big truck. I think is what it was. What, what it was. We just did. Envision ourselves on these big, big pieces of property, you know, farming and you know, we got anything, anything to have to make money. That's what we did, you know, dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. Then he was a dreamer and a doer. Uh, he, he, he always dreams through, you know, usually. Uh, and but we play that game of imagine, and of course, we love running it. I could be must around about fifty, sixty miles a day. When we would play that game as, as kids. And of course, I was like, Robert played it too before we, we got involved with hog hunting, you know, it came later. Uh, but uh, and then he, when he was in high school, uh, he uh, took a job with a grocery store and, and just, I mean, just dependable as the word go. He just, uh, he, he was. And he was a workaholic. And that's all you live with a bad family. He was it was family and, and work, family and work. Uh, you got to talk about the story as a kid with the matches and the. Oh yeah, well, this is, well, first of all, then he, again, imagine things. We, I, I, I told this in his, uh, his funeral, that uh, about him. Imagine he's a radio announcer. This is the Rambler speaking, and bringing you the. The news of the day and the songs of the day or whatever he might have said, I don't know. But we, uh, but he was he was really giving it, giving, giving his best shot. It's pretty good, by the way. Uh, but that, that name stuck, the Rambler, hmm. and, and it fit boys and one too. It was more than just a radio announcer. He he was a Rambler. Uh, he loved on his own business and he, he loved that. And he was he's losing money a lot of times. <laughs> But uh, it was better than being the head of a, a chemical plant. Uh, but he made, made money there, at least, for that plant. Uh, well, he made money elsewhere, too, and he made, made it big when he, made, when he didn't, he didn't. But uh, he, was a, he was really the person who held that family together, or our family together, after I was gone. Um, uh, he saw to all the needs were met in every way. You know, he, Spent money Christmas time, you wouldn't believe. Um, then he didn't have any desire to go to college. He, he did, when I joined the Navy, he followed me a week later, got to Montgomery and decided that wasn't for him. He you know, stick around to him, shuffle a little bit longer, you know. 
But then he was always kind of frail and small and wore, wore a heavy winter coat in, this, in July, 105 degrees outside, he'd be in the way that jacket. And he was very appealing always until he got to be in his 20s and he turned out to be a giant, a, a real giant. About six, six, seven, seven and a half, something like that. Um, but what, what, what you, you're kind of talking about the, 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 the woods. Oh, the, 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 yeah. gee, that was more of my problem than it was his. Uh, Denny and I, as, as baby, I was only, I was five years old or somewhere in the round five, which is a bad year for me in many ways. But but that was good. My grandfather had made me get a rocking chair and uh, a little bit of baby rocking chair and us. But, but uh, the, the day before the big, big event of the fire, uh, Robert and, and Elm and Connie and Ray Johnston, that was our buddies, uh, neighboring buddies. That, oh, it's been the time all the time to Dallas, anyhow, you know. Well, they, they set me up to uh, set the woods on fire. We love the woods fire. Cause it goes, and that, that's just, we had them every year. Somebody, somebody didn't like somebody, they burned it. We woods down, the forest down. Uh, not the house, they wouldn't do that, but they'd burn the woods. And, uh, we met them on the land and burn them wood and burn the land up. And uh, so we love wood fires. Yes, but the big fire that happened after, after this event, after this, during this event I'm talking, uh, Robert and Connie and Ray and Elma sent me up. I'd be home that day and uh, next day. And so Robert went and found me a box of kitchen matches. And, they, and I told them what I was going to do and set the woods on fire. And they just all planned to be at the house the next day and enjoy the, enjoy the sights because they'd be on fire. Anyhow, it was a big ditch up about a, oh, about a three quarters mile from the house along the Ave Highway, this Richardson, Ave Richardson Highway. The highway is a gravel road. Uh, but uh, I went up near there. There's a place where, I, where, where the big flat came up from some a ridge of land and uh, some garbage patches and some straw and some pine trees out there so we can gather up a little straw and not much, but we, I struck out of it down to I think about two matches out of that box. And we never did get a fire started. So I, I figured out I knew where that big rock was, a big Indian rock, it was a grinding rock. Down near the spring that we use in case it's a secondary source of water uh, for the home. So went down, I went down and I took Benny and we went down and we went to the house and picked up some newspaper and some old magazines and probably some good stuff about us too. But took it down there and I, we, we raked straw, we raked these, we raked straw, we raked these and we got a pile about almost as high as a room, you know. And mix that paper, newspaper up in the magazine paper up in there. But man, we were ready to go. And when but I knew I, we had to go, we only had two matches left. And I said, then to be extra careful, you know, I remember being over that, giving him straight instructions about this, that, move this over there. Anyhow, it was fun. Uh, so we we, got, we protected that fire with, with our souls and our, our, everything we had in us. And we struck that, that magic match. Didn't have to use the second one. They got that newspaper going there, and it started building and building and building and building. So we got to get out of here. And uh, so we all tailed up to the house, and I got my rocking chair, and I went out in the front yard. And then mother was washing clothes. It had to be a Thursday. She so goes back there and says, "Mama, you won't guess what JD just did." I said, "What did JD just do?" He set the woods on fire. What? JD, come here. This house is with it. So. And, uh, Sure enough, he was reaching the tops of the pine trees, now, about, about 100 feet up there, you know, at that time. He was in all these trucks and these, that, that, that everything in this country was coming along, coming down these roads and, and people jumping in, jumping out everywhere and fighting fire, keep fire away from the house, keep fire away from the garden. And uh, they were all over the country, they are coming in there trying to fight that fire. Uh, I forget the exact, the exact amount of acres, it was a thousand acres that burned. And, uh, but anyhow, 
It's a wonder we had lost that, that place. It's just a wonder. But uh, sure, sure enough, it, about uh, four o'clock, four thirty in the afternoon, come, it comes the bus. It about to turn around, other than I drive, and uh, all these kids. I mean, the entire bus load lifted out. And uh, to watch the fire, to watch the fire, watch the men working, just do everything they could, save property. They shut the mills down, shut down the work crews on the road, shut down everything. So, 